We are back, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Ree, right here on What I Is Radio. And it is my favorite time of the show. It's the Lauren Ree. Let's talk about it topic of the hour. And tonight we have beautiful guests in the building. We have the women in media here. We have Danielle. We have Camille. And they're going to tell us all about their amazing company. I'm actually really excited I got to get you guys to get in the building because you're always moving and shaking and doing stuff. So I was like, I don't even know if they're going to have time to come through. <laughs> but I was like, I'm going I'm going to shoot my shot, like everybody says. Um, but you guys are always doing something amazing. So I wanted to take the time to have you guys here because I'm a woman in media. And Absolutely. And there's a lot of, um, of girls out there that want to get involved as well. And I thought this would be a wonderful platform for you guys to come and talk about it. So let's just, you know, introduce yourselves to everyone. So, Danielle, you can go first. All right. I mean, who are you? Who Who, who is Danielle? Thank you for having me. Of course. I'm excited to be here. So uh, we appreciate the invitation. Of course. You are a woman in media. You are a sister. So we hope to see you around. (laughs) We want to see you on the ground. (laughs) We want to embrace you. Absolutely. You know, but I am, if I could describe myself in three titles. Okay. Um, you boss, know, first, boss, and more boss. <laughs> <laughs> first and foremost, I am a child of God on a mission to do whatever it is that he will have for me to do. Um, my life is purpose-driven, have Great. a destiny. So wherever he will have me to be, I am more than willing to go. Uh, with that being said, today nice. I am a CEO. I am a artist, performing artist. I do theater arts and also an activist. Nice. And you're under 30, correct? And I'm under 30. How? I'm going to keep riding it. You're going to keep riding it until you hit 30. Yes. And then Please do, because when you turn 30, girl, that's <laughs> an off-air conversation. But <laughs> <laughs> some things start to change. But, no, that is what's up. Like, you are um, actually out here doing a lot of stuff. I didn't add activists to the bio to my notes, but um, what are you doing? That's, you know, what activism things are you doing right now? So Women in Media is certainly one of the platforms that we use um, because we advocate for women and we, our whole mission is to remember women, remind them to own their voices. Okay. Um, Also, I do a little politics. Nice. You know, I'm a commissioner for Governor Tom Wolf. I'm the youngest appointed commissioner in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, And so with that being said, we advocate and we also advise the governor on affairs when it comes to black communities. Nice. So if it has anything to do with how he should respond to situations start, such as the Starbucks, we're behind the scenes writing and giving him proposals. Hey, you should say this or don't say this. You should show up here or you should not show up here and ways he should move on legislation when it comes across his desk. Okay. Um, and so those are some of the ways that I do advocacy work um, when it comes to, you know, policy, when it comes to making sure that we have elected officials in office who represent our concerns and who represent and look like people like us. Cool. So you are a Spelman graduate. Yes. And you also, this is a wonderful, um, African-American Chamber of Commerce. You were named the Young Professional of the Year. That was a, a huge accolade. Um, how did that actually come about? I, when I got that honor, I was really um, just grateful, you know, for mm-hmm. it. It was my first honor as a college graduate who has been, you know, building my companies and my enterprises. And so I was at the Chamber of Commerce doing work. I was a member at the African American Chamber of Commerce and I saw an opportunity that was missing and I owned my voice and raised it and said, there are no opportunities here for people like me. I'm a young black woman in business and all of your initiatives here speak to people who are established in business. Okay. But this is the African American Chamber of Commerce. I'm an African American. What can you do for me? There was nothing there. So I sat down with the chairman of the board and I presented them a proposal and said, these are some of the steps that I believe the chamber can take to start engaging people of my generation, um, the millennial generation. And so I was there doing work. I was building out the young professional uh, membership there. Mm -hmm. I was exposing their message to the community at large and they honored me for that work of just being diligent. Um, You know, I was a volunteer. Okay. You know, and I came in with initiatives, but not only did I have initiatives, I also implemented those initiatives. So let's rewind it back just a little bit. How did you actually get your start in media? I got my start in media. Well, I was introduced 
into the world of communications at large through theater arts. Okay. Um, I'm a dancer. I was at Spelman. I got a degree in theater arts from there. And at a young age, I went from just performing on stage and doing choreography and soloing to learning the production elements of how to put together a show. And whenever you're put to putting together a show, one of our worst fears as artists is that we perform to an audience of no one. Like, <laughs> we, we need it sold out. <laughs> like, I need everybody to come through, sold out, line around the corner. Right. I, need, I need that, the seats filled. And so when I started to learn the production elements of how to put together a show, that means getting butts in seats, selling tickets, and doing the marketing. And that started to open up another world for me. It, it, it allowed me to learn new skills. Okay. Um, and so I was driven off of my passion for theater to learn these new elements and to learn these other production skills. And I took that. I did that in high school. Went to Spelman. Did that in college. Did it all. Anywhere that there was a stage and a performance at Morehouse and Spelman, I was in it. You were there. Auditioned everywhere. I, I went to school for that. That's, that's what I was, you know, chasing. And... I began to learn new things, and I took those skills out of the world of theater and just into the world, just people, people. you know, loving people, always enjoying bringing people together for a good cause, always having a big mouth and kind of knowing what the moves was. I was a promoter in college, okay. so I got out of theater. I was still doing theater, but then I also took it a step further. I joined some promotion teams in Atlanta. I was down there pushing all the clubs. I was on South Beach. So you've seen all sides of, of it, basic. It. Yes. So that's so basically from there, how did you kind of get into birthing women in women in media? So from there, I came home from Spelman, and I fought that decision because my plan was to go to L.A., be a Lakers girl, and be a teacher. Really? Yeah. Uh, I was going to take all my money from graduation in the car, okay. buy a one-way flight to L.A., and keep it moving. I was either going to be in L.A. or be in Atlanta. Philly was not in the plans. I came home depressed. What am I doing here? <laughs> Why am I home? I've heard, this, sto I've heard then. this story a couple of times. <laughs> Lord, what am I doing here? You know, um, and so I went to Radio 1 as a college graduate, took an internship there because I wanted to learn more about event planning. And I knew the radio station did events. I went to the radio station for one thing and left with an entirely new skill set, which was radio. So my background in media is radio. So I got to Radio 1. I started to do content producing there and learning all about, you know, studio life and um, had, the ability, had the opportunity to work on Dean Wiseman's show, My New Philly. Yeah. I mean, not My New Philly. My Philly Lawyer. Lawyer. Yeah. My Philly Lawyer. So he has the legal talk show on Sunday. So I was his first producer for that show. Did that. I did Philly Speaks with E. Stephen Collins, and from there the door continued to open. I went to Comcast and started producing TV. I went to Word Radio, started producing shows over there. Then I started to do some um, freelance writing for different outlets around the city, and it just kept going. So it was really me just launching a business in event planning, realizing that the radio station had, you know, events, and I ended up getting more than what I was even thinking about um, at the time. So before we go to break, um, why did you believe that women in media was something that was needed at that time, especially in our city? I went to a film screening about Philadelphia's art scene, and I was very excited to be there because it married my two worlds, art and media. Okay. And it was a group of young filmmakers, so it was a great opportunity to go out and support. Went, hated it, terrible because they only had one woman represented in that film for her arts. So if you're going to make a feature film about my city, Philadelphia's art scene, make sure that the narrative is correct. And for me, it just, it didn't reside well with me. Okay. You know, especially coming right back home from Spelman, a mecca that really celebrates women, black women, and provides for us. And then I come home to Philly and it's like, Y'all excited about shopping a film around in film festivals that's just not true, you know? Mm. And so they had a DJ represented in the film, which is cool, but, like, what about visual artists? What about performance artists? What about people who... Radio personalities? Who create, you know, structures and things right. like that. All types of... All of that was missing. It was just males, males, black males. It was just bad. It was just bad.
that and so it just something inside of me couldn't let it go and it moved me to just create a small conversation in a private event to remind women to own their voices because somewhere along the line a woman's voice was not at the table if she was at the table she didn't own her voice to speak up to represent other women and that's that's where it really got started Ooh. so from that it has become all of this all of this which we will get into a little bit more when we come back from break um because i do want to know you know where women in media is at this time um who fits into the mold to be a part of women in media and how we actually do that and then i have some other questions for you and Camille too I didn't forget about you uh we're gonna uh get you into this conversation as well so everyone we got Drake coming up this song is Elevate I actually kind of sort of like this song a little bit off the album I said kind of sort of Swiss don't 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 quote me on it I kind of sort of like this one listen out of 30 songs I can like one okay <laughs> it's 30. all right <laughs> was it like 30 songs it's like 25 30 songs I can like one it's okay all right, so everybody, we will be right back. It's your girl, Lauren Reed, right here on What I Ice Radio. Don't go anywhere. We are back, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Reed, right here on What I Ice Radio. We having this interesting behind-the-scenes talk about the In My Feelings Challenge. I mean, I'm just going to pose the question really quick. Does Drake owe the Shiggy Show a check? He absolutely does owe him a check. I'm sorry. Like, a couple people on my, my Facebook page was like, no, he don't know him nothing. If anything, Drake, now people know who the Siggy Show is. I'm like, nah, nobody was worried about that In My Feelings song at all. Nobody was so worried did about it. either one of them. The song or him. Shiggy. <laughs> Ray Shimmer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, like it's the, the same thing. Challenge. So that's what someone said on my page. Someone said, at the minimum, he should be in the video. Like, if they do a video for it, oh, that's like, a good idea. he should be in the, at the minimum, he should be, be in that. I agree with that. I'm not even going to lie. I saw the post, and I was like, yo, when it first came, I was like, yo, what is he doing? Because he has this, like, tight pink Reebok sweatsuit on. And I'm like, yo, what is boy doing? Because he's always doing something, like, really silly, like, and crazy. And I'm like, what is, what is really going on? And I'm like, all right. And I just kept passing, and literally... 24 hours later, it was, like, explosive. Mm -hmm. I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, okay, well, let's see how this goes. And here we are. Now, it's, the wave is coming down, though. People are getting tired of the song. <laughs> so, by next weekend, people will have posts up, like, if I hear this damn Kiki one more time, it's going to be on. No, seriously, somebody put up one meme that said, when you're trying to uh, concentrate hard on something, all you can come up with is Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me earlier today. I'm like, mm. so yeah, what else do I have to do? And I'm like, Kiki. Yeah, you know, I was like, Dad, this is bad. It's really, really bad. It's sad, though. But like you guys said behind the scenes, Sierra did kill it. If you do yes. want to watch some of the good ones, Sierra killed it. Russell was just riding a wave in the back. I don't know what Russell was doing. I was like, I get it. You're just going to watch your wife. Nice. I get it. Um, she really started killing it. She did. Danny Lee did a good job. She's another artist. And my boy, uh, the one who did it first after Ziggy, uh, what's the football player name? Odell. I think he killed it a little bit. <laughs> he always doing something like that, though. He always is dancing around in, um, in a video. All right, but we're back to the things that are important. Feminine <laughs> media. Um, Danielle and Camille are here. Um, and we're talking about the whole women in media movement. And it's just you guys have such a great brand and a, and a good um, topic for young women who are trying to get into this media game so I just kind of want a couple questions especially for you Camille and your experience in being a woman in media um, what do you think some of the misconceptions of being a woman a woman in this industry actually is because I think sometimes women can get a bad rap so what do you think some of those misconceptions are some of the misconceptions are that women can't work together like we can't all get along mm. but um, you see it a lot on like Right. The women are always fighting for like this for each other, but that's not really that's not reality. We all work together. We don't really fight with this. Yeah, because it's because <laughs> it's not reality. It's a it's a show. Right. <laughs> it's ratings, so. Exactly. Um, but I hate those shows, by the way. You know what? I'm gonna be really honest with you. I, I stop watching TV. I watch them you stop watching. TV. That's the only I way. I stop Listen, watching. TV. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's the only way that I'm going to stop watching trash TV is if I stop watching TV completely because you easily get sucked in because 
into like, well, Dag, what's on TV tonight? It's nothing there. Nothing. Then before you know it, you clicked on VH1, Love and Hip Hop is on. <laughs> Someone's jumping across the table. And, like, and I mean, instantly you want to see why the person just jumped across the table, right? So you're sucked in. And I took a break for a really long time. I forgot what show it was that got kind of got me hooked back in again. And it's actually my girlfriend. Shout out to the group text. Y'all know who y'all are. Like, <laughs> they would be talking about it, and I would be the only one, like, not commenting. So I would sneak and be like, what they talking about? And I would go look at it. And I'm like, oh, that's what they was talking about. Because I'm on the group text, like, stop watching that trash. <laughs> but behind right. the scenes, I was like, <laughs> exactly. I'm, like, taking a peek. But, yeah. um, no, seriously, from what you just said, I know that is one of the misconceptions that we all can't work together. Um, so how do you keep that cohesiveness? I mean, it is a women that is, is a, I'm sorry, a company that's surrounded by uh, just all women. So how do you try to build that cohesiveness, avoid all those misconceptions? And I mean, let's be honest, sometimes it's not easy working with all different types of personalities, especially women tend to have very strong personalities sometimes. So right. agreeing on things, like how do you guys keep that type of stuff up? I mean, we are mission focused, you right. know, and so everybody who's around the table should understand and they do understand and know that we're here to invest in women and serve women, you know, and being a servant leader comes with a level of humility. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that humility, then this is not really the place for you. We're a nonprofit organization that's here to give back to others. While we do create opportunities and platforms for ourselves to highlight our own work and our initiatives and to reach our goals, it's a community aspect here, you okay. know? Um, so I think it really, I mean, with anything, you start the presidents from the head up, you know what I mean? The head down. I mean, so it's like, I, you know, I try my best to lead by example um, and to operate out of a spirit of excellence. And when I fall short, I appreciate the people around me who will tell me, like, yo, get it together. You know what I mean? And that I can value. And being open to that, right? Right. And, and value, you know, that. But this is not a place where we're just here to grandstand, where we're here to, like, you know, just stand on the backs of others and not help each other. Like, we're all here to help each other. We're all here trying to, you know, really move forward with all of the visions and different things that we have. So I think setting the tone from the beginning, being very organized, letting people, letting our members know the expectations, and then really walking what you talk, you know, because people observe you, they see you, and they see how you operate, you know. So it's one thing you can say, oh, this is what we do, and you can put it on paper and say this is what we do, but you got to be a living example of that. Absolutely. You know, and so just from my background in general, I went to all-female college. I was a Girl Scout growing up, but I have no biological sisters. I have all brothers. Okay. But, you know, being a part of Spellman, and that was really the example that showed me that women work excellent together. And if we can be very direct and specific, black women, you know. No, um, please do. And sometimes young people decide that they don't even want to consider Spelman as an option because it's an all-girls school. And they don't want to deal with women or they don't want to deal with girls because girls are catty. They and I'm like, well, where? Why? You know, like, that's immature women. That's women who don't have respect for each other. But right. Spelman is an amazing place. You should want to be around sisters. Like, you should want to have that camaraderie. Um, but we also take the time. I think it's very important that we get to know each other outside of business and work. So it's not always work. We have a lot of social time, too. So you said something about um, setbacks and, you know, people being able to lift you up when you have those setbacks and say, all right, Danielle, you got to, you know, get back on back on the horse, get it back together. Um, how have some of those setbacks or failed failures made you stronger through this process? You have two businesses. So you, um, the other one we didn't talk about. Three. Yet. Three. I'm sorry. <laughs> I only know about two. And so I know the event planning and PR business. Yes. AOI, right? Yep. And then women in media. So, you know, I'm sure you've dealt with some failures and setbacks. Oh, so yeah. So how has that, you know, kept you grounded into where you are today? They are all learning lessons and building blocks. And I had to realize that it comes with the territory of being an entrepreneur and it comes with the territory of being a CEO and really going into uncharted waters and like on this unconventional path, you know, my professional path and what I'm doing in my business is very unconventional, you know, so I'm blazing a trail and creating something 
from nothing that has not been created before in the way that I'm doing it. Okay. Um, so with that being said, first I graduated with a degree in theater arts and history. So what I'm doing in business is totally <laughs> nothing to do with right. my degree, <laughs> you know, so everything is learning on the job. Um, and it gets very hard. I'm not going to say that it's not hard. Entrepreneurship is probably the most, it's, it's very difficult. And one of the hardest things that I've ever attempted in life, but it's rewarding. Um, but having those setbacks and failures really just provides opportunities to see where I can improve and get better at. And then a lot of times I look at motivational stories of people who like the guy who started Amazon, mm -hmm. you know, um, and how many times people have failed before they got to where they are. Even Steve Harvey, um, Steve Harvey's um, story, you know, yeah. he was homeless. Right. You know, I'm like, maybe the prerequisite to success is that you have to be homeless <laughs> for a little bit <laughs> before you get on. All right. You know, um, and so just really using those different people's stories as motivation to keep going um but you can't sit in your down work and your failures and your definitely failures. Can't. You can't um and you can't always take yourself too seriously like come on like i was 20 when i started this business like give me a break ain't nobody give me no money to start this like all this is from the muscle i started from literally nothing you know with no formal background i didn't walk into legacy money i didn't walk into seed money you know i just walked with an idea and a vision and just worked it to make it happen cool so women in media wh who is like the ideal person to be a part of this organization and how would one be a part of the organization sure so women in media is exactly what it says women in media so we are diverse by ethnicity we are diverse by age group we are diverse by discipline in media so mm -hmm. whether that is a radio host or personality like yourself mm -hmm. whether it's a producer whether it's a designer a videographer a edit editorial person who writes for p newspapers or magazines um photography, film, you know, new media, traditional media, and even communications fields and like okay. the PR fields. So those are really the core of who our members are. And it's also comprised of women who are actually working in the industry or those who aspire to enter the industry, such as students, whether it's high school students, college students, or even women who are going through career changes and they want to get into um, the industry. We also have people who network with us who are authors and writers, okay, as well, and even artists. Um, so how do that? How does how do those um, artists, writers? How does that kind of correlate to what you guys do? So how do you guys work hand in hand together? A lot of times we we work with artists, especially artists who have great messages that they share through their music. Um, we allow them to utilize our platform to expose their message. Okay, you know, um, and they're always seeking opportunities to expose their work and what it is that they're doing. So we just kind of provide an avenue for them to do that. And we, we support them, you know, in that. Um, and when it comes to writing, you know, at its very basic form of communications, any form of communications or media, I mean, writing is, is a basic fundamental, right? You know, um, so someone who authors a book, you know, that's, that's writing, that's art. You know, um, so for us, that's just another avenue of sharing and exposing a story, the storytelling, you know, even music, that's storytelling. So that's a perfect um, point for us to take a pause and transition um, into a music break. And then when we come back, um, we're going to kind of sort of talk about your annual um, Women in Media Conference. The I best event in the entire city of Philadelphia. <laughs> we're going to talk about the type of events that you have, your um, the speakers who come through. I know you guys just had one this past September, correct? That's when it was, correct? Yes, September, it's every September. September. Every September. So I want you, uh, um, the audience to get to know what you know, what they can be prepared for coming up this year um, for the conference and what kind of activities you guys have planned for that. Um, and also how they can be a part of um, Women in Media. So we'll get on to all of that when we come back. Awesome. Um, I don't know what's coming up on the way. So we have Khalid, Ty Dollar Signs, and Six Black with On the Way. We are back, we are back, we are back. It's your girl Lauren Reed right here on What I Ice Radio. And that was Khalil, Six Black, and Ty Dollar Signs. But on the way, that video is pretty dope. If people still watch videos, um, 
check that one out. Right. I feel like people don't watch videos anymore. But you gotta like search them up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. YouTube, uh, YouTube, YouTube. That's right. Like, did you see that video? Like, Exa- no. Exactly. That's where basically where they get to see it at. But I have the um, the women here from Women in Media, um, and we're talking about their annual conference that they do in September. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So the conference. Um, it's, you said how many years have you been doing the conference now? This year will be our sixth annual conference. Wow, six years in the making. Six years. So if I was to come to the conference, what would I be looking forward to? A bunch of awesomeness. <laughs> of course, So right? it's really like a day of celebration of women. It's a very warm, inviting, and very exciting atmosphere. And so this year, it's two days. Okay. Previously, past five years, it's been a one-day conference. But the women never want to leave. Nice. Like, never want to leave. It went from a half-day conference to a full-day conference. And we always extend the time a little bit okay. by an hour or two each year. And now it's two days. Um, so at that conference, we have a keynote speaker who also gets the Rete of Media Award. And that award is given to a woman who demonstrates excellence in media and who is invested in supporting and investing in women. Nice. Um, and so they, we open up with the keynote address. We also have a networking breakfast. It's like a mimosa breakfast with like a DJ. So we like start you out real warm. <laughs> we have a panel discussion and the panel is always centered around what the theme is for the year. Okay. This year's theme is limitless beyond the glass ceiling. So now that, you know, women has really been setting the bar very high. Yeah. We've been accomplishing and achieving more than we've ever had. It's been like a, a, all of a sudden, like a boom. It's been like the century of the woman. Yes. They say, is people like, I really believe this is the year of the woman. I'm like, it's been the year of the woman for the past six years. Where have you been? This is the century <laughs> of the woman. And so, you know, now that we have exceeded our limits, we have done all of these amazing things. We are, you know, breaking barriers. You know, we're beyond the ceiling. What's, right. what's now? what's there you know what's next so that's what we're going to conference about this year we'll have a panel discussion normally we we feature four women who are experts in media and then we have workshops so the first day will be all the speakers okay it will be the award ceremony and for the first time we're incorporating some performances we have like we're at the international house which is 3701 chestnut street right on the campus of university of penn yep and we rented out the beautiful theater with the stage and i'm like we're gonna use this theater you know so we're gonna incorporate some local acts and we're also considering bringing down some acts from atlanta because we have two chapters so we have atlanta and we also have philly so we you know making sure that we're incorporating and you know doing some cross exchange between the two cities so that would be really exciting and new for this year as well in addition to that, we have a media marketplace where we're hoping that Water Ice will be stationed this year. And hey, no, yes, we will. Be yeah, here. right. <laughs> I mean, it's, I put my request in very early. We can all plan it out and make sure it goes smooth. But the media marketplace is a great opportunity because that's where we do a lot of our live media. Yeah. You know, so we'll do some live broadcasts. We've had WRD there in the past doing live radio. And um, we also have opportunities for people who are looking for professional work in media Media. and communication. So if there's an agency, a company who has internship opportunities, hiring opportunities, consultant work, any type of project work that women can, you know, really use their skills and talent, they're represented in the media marketplace. We have an author's corner and we feature a select few of authors who are published um, women authors and they get to sell their books and tell their stories there. And something new for this year is a beauty bar. Mm. So we want to incorporate some beauty, some health and wellness, some lifestyle things that women can um, pick up while they're at the conference and learn some new techniques um, to take home with them. So this is Saturday and Sunday, September 15th and 16th. And 16th. Okay. Yep. And when are tickets going to start going? On they're sale? on sale now. You can buy all of them if you would like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're all available. You can buy all of them. Yeah. Right? Get your friends, everybody. Everybody. Now. So um, before we kind of sort of wrap this up, I just want to uh, make sure that I have a one very important question because what I 
got from the bio was that you have the um, essential ease you like to empower, educate, and I forget the last one. Uh, empower, educate. Empower, equip, equip and, and encourage. And encourage, right. Equipped, a.k.a. Yeah. educate. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> um, so um, I thought that was amazing for because, you know, a young girl coming into the industry, sometimes they feel voiceless. And they don't know where they fit into this industry because it's huge, right? It is. You can do so many different things, and some people feel like they're pigeonholed only to do one thing. So what is the one thing that you would tell someone, a young woman coming into this um, industry who wants to have a voice, but they feel voiceless? What would be that one piece of advice that you could give her? So you touched on something very important, and um, you talked about having diversity pretty much in your portfolio of media yeah and one of the things that we touched on and maybe conference like two was multimedia and being a woman who is multifaceted in the industry because you know gone are the days where you have maybe a newspaper editorial company who will have a reporter a photographer a videographer now you have to do all those three things you have yeah. to go get the story you have to edit it you have to shoot it, yeah. put it up, you know, and so the market jobs, it. market it, <laughs> you know, so you have to be able to do a lot of those different things. And women who have been in the industry, you know, um, it's a learning curve and it's changing for them, too. They either have to learn, pick up new skills so they can swim or they, they get out of here because they can't adapt oh, to, that's, to new media. That's so real. Radio you know? is the, the radio is the same thing. Get into radio. Like, this is what I wanted to do. And then it was like, oh, no, I need you to interview someone in front of the camera. And I was like, I don't do that. I don't so, do that, right? Right, right. You know what I mean? You have to learn and how to adapt and to get into those things. Because, like you said, longer the days where all you do is sit in the studio and no one ever sees. You remember the days you didn't know what the radio personality looked like? Looked like. Unless you went to, like, an <laughs> event. Yeah. Like, I remember listening to the radio and never knowing what, you know, you know, the the radio personalities look like unless you went to like powerhouse right and then they came to introduce the artists on there you're like oh that's what <laughs> golden girl looks like or whoever like that's who that or when that's what that person is right. like, you just knew you their didn't voice know their, you just knew their voice correct so like you said those days are gone you gotta gone. do everything. everything so so for sure that's definitely a advice that i would give out you know to our women is you know make sure that you're picking up multiple skills and that you can Market yourself in a couple of different ways, you know. Um, another another form of advice that I got that I would like to share is that, you know, continue to create content, mm -hmm. you know, because you might want to work for a big station or a big media conglomerate, but if you don't get the opportunity, who cares? We have all these outlets and all these different ways that we can, can create our own content, our own media, and really, I mean, Instagram has a new feature, you create your own TV show. Right on Instagram. So you can, you're, we're Gotta so Gotta figure empowered. out how to use that. Yeah. Having figured it all out. Yeah. Yet. You know, but <laughs> we're empowered today to really own and do our own thing. So yeah. really establishing what your brand is, who you are, creating that content and making sure that your skill set is diverse so that you can market yourself in different ways. And how do you make sure that your voice doesn't get lost in all of that? Because sometimes it can happen owning your voice yeah how do you keep your how you own your voice i think that at first you i mean should be and be true to yourself and know who you are um because when you begin to center in on who you are then you will understand your voice and the energy and what you bring to the table nice you know so knowing self understanding what self wants understand what self needs what self loves and then when you really know your voice and when you understand who you are not being afraid to share it and let it be known you know um but also find ways where it's it's respectable when you share it it's something that makes sense you know, because sometimes we can misuse our voices. Yeah, we can. <laughs> you know, so make sure that whatever you decide to say or decide to put out there, that it's something that will represent yourself. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, 
before we go ahead and get out of here make sure the people know where they can find women in media on like social media all your handles and things of that nature absolutely everybody save the date for the sixth annual women in media conference yes. september 15th and 16th right here in philadelphia it is not a conference just for philly you can come from africa and come you can come from atlanta you can come from florida this is women in media global we are on line women in media global.org our instagram is at whim global facebook at whim global our twitter is at whim speaks and you go on our website check out our instagram page you'll get all the details for the conference september 15th and 16th yep all right well you guys heard it first that is our interview with women in media global make sure you guys are getting your tickets right now for the sixth annual conference i guarantee it's going to sell out it will it will there will be no empty seat there um what ice radio will definitely be in the building make sure that we get our tickets first before it all sells out um you can, <laughs> uh, we will definitely be pushing that for you guys i'm really excited to be able to be a part of that and get to see who you guys have on the bill and who's going to be there this interview was amazing ladies thank you for stopping through i always tell all my guests the first time you come you are a guest the next time you come your family so make sure you come by again so we get to talk closer to the date of the um of the, the conference you maybe make some exclusive drops who is actually going to be, be there, there. yeah that would be really cool if you guys can come through and do that as well thank you all right everybody make sure you are tuned in to the lauren reed live show every tuesday eight o'clock right here on what eyes radio make sure you download that free tune in app and also check us out on instagram facebook twitter all the other good stuff you know the handle water ice radio and it's your girl lauren Ree. and never forget not all superheroes wear capes but sometimes they wear headphones peace <laughs>